now let's talk about number four law <laughs> are you ready the fourth law of fire is the law of hunger the law of hunger write it down it is hunger that will make you keep at the wood if you run out of hunger for fire there is no magic the fire will die fire has natural tendency to burn out do you know each time each time the devil wants to get you actually distracts you nice 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 nice, nice. before you know it you don't finish god speaks to you you don't hear one of the sins the ancient sins that the devil the devil fishes in trouble water trouble it troubles the water first you get agitated noise everything then it zaps you out <laughs> so there comes a time you just steal and i recommend it in marriage whatever a day that you allow your spouse to have a little bit of corner a little bit of reflection a little bit whether it's one hour whatever every day have a time of just being still recollecting thinking about something it is it is powerful it is very very powerful is that a thing that have sustained some, some systems the ancient ancient religion eastern religion of buddhism and whatever if you go this is what sustains from one generation to another for you it may not make sense sense but they have inner dynamics that keep them running generation after generation so recollection then at least once in a year retreat where people take one full week seven days out and that has influenced a lot of catholics who are enlightened one month one so you see a family or an individual a businessman a businesswoman sometimes once in a year just takes a vacation out of the, that vacation one week he goes to a retreat center he goes to a place where he just prays and stays those who are deep they do that by the time you come back your eyes see what you could not see before your ears begin to hear what you could not hear before because there is clarity in business your mind is working clearer in whatever you do so retreat recollection a time with yourself a time with yourself and to grow there has to be such a time every day of your life a time with yourself your husband must respect that time your wife must respect that time your children must respect that time if you want to go far you must have a time that everybody around you respects that time that's the secret of carrying the fire am i communicating because it in, is in that private time you will hear things you hear things fire obeys principles if it is just noise 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 there are noises in hell also sincerely hell is not a quiet place we have not yet started teaching about today we are still breaking principles we will finish it in jesus name okay so we talked about the law of what hunger hunger increases the intensity and the durability of the fire hunger increases the intensity and the durability of the fire now just carrying fire in itself is not everything the intensity of your fire when you talk about watts there is 100 watts 5000 watts they are not the same the difference is in what intensity so it is hunger that some people just have hunger enough to pray once in one hour in a day for them mighty achievement that is their level if you see in the is it thermometer the measurement of hunger is it in thermometer or what <laughs> uh -uh. the measurement of hunger now there should be something that measure oh scientists even i mean no scientists <laughs> hunger meter <laughs> See, if you see somebody just prays one eye in a day and it's great achievement if you look at the hunger meter of that person 
very low <laughs> very very low so it is hunger that will make you seek every time to push the needle push the needle push the needle push the needle so sometimes when you push the needle push the needle the heaven is open i don't know what i'm talking to somebody yeah when you push push beyond your comfort zone you will meet new frontra new frontiers you will hear the inaudible you will touch the intangible and you will see the invisible it is in the place of hunger can you rise raise your right hand say father no i didn't hear you say father in the name of jesus baptize me with high level of hunger pray that prayer pray for a few seconds father baptize me with high level baptize me with high level of hunger the lord give me higher level of hunger the lord i need higher level of hunger higher level of hunger in the name of jesus christ let me hear your amen like fire be seated so that's it. let's expose the law of hunger let's talk a little bit about hunger now fire is never satisfied if you see fire go off it's because it has nothing else to eat fire does not end until it finishes now now you will see this you see you when you eat when you reach a, a, a threshold of your satisfaction say you back out but there is still food right that's not the nature of fire fire never says enough until it is done the moment you no longer see fire it means fire no longer has something to burn this is the nature of fire that's why you see some believers people who used to be fiery who used to be very very passionate so powerful brother oh that brother oh that brother after some time they begin to dodge fellowship they begin to avoid people who used to know that they carried fire why they stop being hungry I started life in a charismatic renewal a Catholic charismatic renewal in Lagos as a young man <laughs> and I shared with I don't know which congregation which people I've talked about how I used to bribe I think I've told you that I used to bribe the man who shared the same place with me were security guys I used to work all night and I used to work all day in order to attend fellowship in the charismatic renewal I, and this man didn't we were not I tried everything to befriend him he wouldn't accept it so the only way to get him sometime was to give up my food give out my food they used to bring us food from the company from the headquarters or from the factory and you look forward to that food because you didn't have money to waste on food so <laughs> you just had to stay hungry the whole day to come and eat that beans and rice from the factory and then in order to get his attention and favor you just donate that food so that say when my food arrives eat it so that let me come back a little bit late i want to attend fellowship just to be there and clap hands with the brethren and sing and and just listen to brothers so the greatest thing that used to excite me in the fellowship used to be some brothers talking you know like brothers giving talk have you seen brothers who give talk see brothers talking giving talk and you feel so excited you feel you say when shall i be when shall i stand before people and also give talk i remember one of those days i went to one uh, 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 brother tony he was the superman of the of the lo locality he was so super. i told him brother i'm anointed i also want to talk <laughs> he told me wait for your time <laughs> the most difficult thing years later he saw me in a ministry big minister as a Catholic priest he came to me and whispered to my ear wait for your time for the first time I forgave him 
Say, you that brother <laughs> did not allow me to talk. Now I understand. <laughs> Praise God. So, if, you know, the joy of just being the led brothers challenge you, brothers mesmerizing you with scriptures and all that. I just wanted it. The hunger to be there. They, just the, the sheer hunger of being there. I will give up my food for the day. Somebody who didn't like and, and encourage me will eat my food for me to come back late. He will still be angry with me, but it doesn't matter. I have enjoyed the fellowship. Doesn't matter. I will carry my face as if I'm apologetic, but inside of me, car. Praise God. Another day I will be humble again and I will beckon just to enjoy fellowship. Hunger will take you far. Gifts will leave you somewhere. But hunger will take you all the way. Stand up and say, Lord, baptize me with new hunger. Speak it again. Stand up and raise those two hands and say, Lord, baptize me with new hunger. Baptize me with new hunger. Say, Lord, I'm not, don't let me be satisfied. Baptize me with new hunger. Hunger for more. Halaboshakata. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Be seated. So, fire is never satisfied. You know that you are walking in the mystery of fire when you come to a point that you are no longer satisfied with your level of prayer, your level of power. If you are currently satisfied, you are not walking in fire. Because fire no the belefu. It is against the nature of fire to be satisfied. It's never. Put hundred fire wood in fire, go and sleep. Fire will do its work. In the morning, if it does not finish, it will greet you while eating. Brack, brack, brack. Good morning. You see what is happening? I said, I've not yet finished. Hunger, fire, no the belly full. So the moment you realize that you are no longer satisfied, you need higher word. You need more word. You need more prayer. You you just need more fellowship. You need, and sometimes you just you just create some time for yourself. At that moment, you are now walking in the supernatural realm of fire. That means there is the insatiability. That's the word, English word, Kero. Such ability, you are not satisfied. That means you are a danger. Am I talking to somebody? You are a danger. That's the secret of how ordinary people become mighty. They are not satisfied. I have seen mighty people become irrelevant. No matter the trial you go through, no matter the temptation, keep your hunger up, keep your hunger alive. It is a matter of time. Affliction will come to pass. You will triumph over mountains and valleys if your hunger will not die. Keep your hunger up. Keep it up. Just raise the bar of your hunger in the face of affliction. Everything is coming against you, but keep your hunger alive. Because if you don't stop eating, if you don't stop desiring, oh, if you don't stop, you will rise. You will rise above the most difficult of affliction and difficulty. So when you see people, you say, Mfram, Mfram, you know, boy, there are too many trouble, too many trouble. They are beginning to tell you, I'm giving up. I feel like giving up. Were you ever up at all? I doubt you were ever up. You just felt you were up. Show me your hunger level. You are as high as your hunger level. That's, it. That's the law of fire. Now, the, why is God bringing this revelation? You know, Commonwealth of Champion is a place where ordinary people are turned into what? Champions. So we are training people for the future. Grace Family, let me share a secret with you. The vision of Grace Family is that in the future, when you have a minister that came from Grace Family into your ministry, you will thank God. You see, Success, sometimes people are not fair in measuring success. How do you measure success? Oh, the other one graduated, graduated with the A, with the first class, right? I said, the other one graduated with third class, right? So, who is most successful? 
the one with first class is not true. Not necessarily true. It is measured against the obstacle they had to overcome to reach where they have reached. There are people who reach first class, they never had to fight a bat, not a fly. There are those who fought hell and deeper hell to get to third class. They are the successful one. Sincerely, the day God taught me this changed my life. I used to compare me with everybody on earth. If, when you talk, I would say, how old are you? When did you start? You say, come here, The person just started to see where he has reached. If, 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 you, if you fight the battle of certain people, <laughs> so somebody will say, I want to be like you. Somebody will just call carelessly on radio. Father, I want to be like you. Say, you want to die young. <laughs> I've been struggling trying to be myself and you are, you are looking for trouble. You know what I have fought? You will not know. If I tell you, you will never believe what I have fought. To be here. I have fought insanity. I have fought death. I have lived in one year fully, every day with the spirit of death. Every day trying something trying to strangle you in the seminary. In my third year in the seminary, the spirit told me you are living with the spirit of death. But you will not die. But the spirit telling you you will not die doesn't mean they will not try to strangle you. I've walked on the road and you lose control. Something else me having you know from, from the back of your head, trying to push you into a moving car. Here in you. So you are struggling to get balance. All you are trying to do is to maintain balance, not to enter a moving car to die. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I have struggled with living bees living on your head for years. So that when you want to pray, they start. No, when bees, when, when, when one bee stings you, right? That's normal. But when multiple bees are constantly thinking, I'm not talking about spiritual thing. You don't see them, but they are stinging you. And you feel it. So, like, your, your head is like, so when. Wait, somebody used to tell me every time you are preaching, you you have you heard have you seen that before? You don't understand me. No, don't don't go there. What people have to go through in order to fulfill the call. What people have to go through, and you know, in the spiritual place it has been revealed to you, these are mountains you need to climb. It has been revealed. So you are not ignorant. Just such that certain time you don't, you wish you never enter. I have told God I regret the day I accepted the call. And it didn't mean anything. God, God knows. Even Jesus on the cross at some moment said, why have you forgotten me? Is that, what does that mean? The father refused to say anything because when you're under the pain of death, you can talk nonsense. I said, I regret. Because to pray for one hour looks like you have to labor and fight against the legion because the legion knows if you pray for one hour you will have grace to stay another one day so I stop comparing myself don't compare don't compare fight your fight am I communicating somebody has first class please rejoice with that person but fight your fight so succeed in spite of everything so it, it was that time when you see certain people for us to reach where we are. I have tried enough to be tall. Because you don't know the loot that I carried when I was small. Some people, you see them, they are so tall, they have never carried anything. Some people, they live and die, they don't carry anything on their head. <laughs> Some of us, we carry... So, why our, our neck did not have fractures? Because we are made for it. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> I don't know whether you have been there. Don't worry if you have not been there. Thank God I have been there for you. <laughs> I've been there for you. So you don't compare. It is hunger that has kept us alive. The swearing every time you will stand in the midst of the pain and you will shout, I shall not die. Have you heard me talk about it before? You don't know why. I am speaking to myself so that I can be my witness that in spite of all this, I will not die. There's hunger in my heart that enables me to live another day when everything tells me Another day is not visible. That's the secret of hunger. Now, if I ask you to stand up and pray for hunger, will you stand up? Now, stand up, raise your two hands. Say, Father, baptize me with a higher level of fire.
in the name of Jesus Christ let me hear your amen like fire be seated write down that prayer point because some of you you just finished praying here every point of prayer that comes up note it down go and pray at home pray through you are in the office nothing is happening in the office turn yourself on pray be hungry hungry person cannot die I will shout in the midst of affliction I will shout in the midst of whatever I said I cannot die I cannot I will not fail I will shout and cry and people will say oh urok, urok, utul yuz, urok. I am fighting my battle to keep my hunger on nothing breaks me I have fought system I have fought church system. I have fought authorities. I have fought opinions. I have fought perception. I have fought it all. Fought devils. The younger brother of devils. The cousins of devils. I fought them. Secret hunger. Few things about hunger. The power of hunger. Hunger makes you allow yourself to be stretched. I've not yet opened the scripture. We will open let's just enjoy this without hunger you will not allow yourself to be stretched and God had to deal with me because by nature I need to be stretched hunger makes you to accept stretching hunger makes you willing to pay the price if you are not hungry you cannot pay the price can you pay the price can you pay the price of rejection? Can you pay the price of standing alone and doubting if there is anybody on your side? Can you pay the price? It takes hunger. By the grace of God, I will not boast, but I have seen what it means to pay the price. It takes hunger. You want it so much. You say, if I die, it's better dying hungry than to be satisfied with what is not okay and live forever. May I not live such life. Never. It's too late. You die hungry rather than living a satisfied life at a mediocre level. I, I ask the grace of hunger to eat you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hunger for righteousness. Hunger for excellence. Hunger hunger causes you to bounce back when you have been knocked down it takes hunger you've been knocked down and severally the enemy who will either knock you down or attempt to knock you down being knocked down is not defeat i watch boxing I'm not involved in any sports i don't play any but i love sports because it's a game of competition. It's a life of competition. I compete against myself every day. So there was a time I devoted myself to watching, watching champions, watching boxing. Mayweather Judo, Jr., Floyd Mayweather Jr., and people like that, Manny Parker and all those guys. I will watch their training, watch their documentary. I watch them. People, they knock people down. They stand up and eventually defeat those who knock them down. That's it. Champions are not those who have never been knocked down. Champions are those who never stayed down. It, it, it takes hunger to get you up after you've been knocked down. So in case you have been knocked down, knockdown is not knockout. If you can stand up, it's not knockout. Knockout is you've been knocked down, but you cannot stay up again. It's over. So you rise. It takes hunger for you to rise I read some books too that are not spiritual Can't Hurt Me I think that's it Can't Hurt Me is one of those books I think by one I don't want to go one Navy SEAL and all that a man of hunger who have overcome incredible obstacles to be among the one of the greatest Navy SEAL greatest human being in the American military in their history amazing i think david grogan or something some name i can't skip it don't want to go look for it hunger causes you to burn hunger makes you celebrate victory 
and makes you grief with detachment this one i will let you know you see a hungry person stays in grief brief a hungry person stays in victory brief briefly lazy people they stay in grief forever and they stay in victory forever You see some people, when they celebrate one victory, one year, they have not yet gone back to work. They are still celebrating. And when something happens to them, grief, they will stay for three years and expect everybody to visit them. Those are the people who are constantly accusing the church. They are not caring. Those grief lovers. You have grief. Don't grieve like those who do not have hope. A hungry person, as a matter of rule, let's, before I open the scripture, let's keep this rule. As a matter of rule, don't celebrate anything beyond one day. And don't grieve anything beyond one day. It's very hard, though. But if you make it as a rule and walk towards it, you will go far in life. Grief has a way of breaking you and making you incapable of walking again. So, Grief briefly and move on. Celebration has a way of stealing your strength. Oh, we have already won. See, some people, they make a little money. They go and sit out, sit out, sit out, sit out, sit out, sit out. Nonsense. Move on. The matter of you celebrate from morning, once it's evening, recollect. Wake up the following day in action. You are grieving from morning till evening wake up the following day in what action you will go far it takes hunger for more for you not to allow grief to take your life and for you not to allow celebration of victory to take your life having said that and these are principles that came to me in the presence of god after prayers i sit down and these things will come you just write them down it's not like you got them from book and i even if I, this is all i tell you they come from the spirit and if you apply them they will change your life change your life having said that mm, elisha is a man who walks in an unprecedented level of fire in the old testament apart from there is no man in the whole of the old testament and there are very few people in the entire bible that can be compared to a man called elisha in matters of hunger praise god He's a model. First Kings. Write it down before you check it again. First Kings chapter 19 from verse 15 to 17. He's a model of the law of fire in the Bible. Then the Lord said to him, he said to Elijah, go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Azael as king over Syria. Praise God. Also, you shall anoint Jehu the son of Nimshi as king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat of Ebel Mehola, you shall anoint as prophet. Where? In your place. Glory. He said, you will anoint him to be in your place. That means a man who will stand in your stead. There are different levels of anointing. There is an anointing that will make a man walk with you. There is an anointing that will make a man walk after you or behind you. But there is an anointing that will make a man stand in your place. And then see the person to be anointed to stand in the place. Have you ever heard the story of Elijah? Before Elijah came to confront Ahab, where was he? Do you know his father? Do you know his mother? Do you know his history? What do you know about Elijah? Go and find out. There are very few things. Elijah just broke out like a meteor in the heavens. Just broke out from nowhere. And a man who will stand in his place has to be a man who has what it takes to break out from nowhere. I want, uh, God asked me to come and challenge you today. When you sit down, and we have been talking about the people going to church to look for a man of God. This is not a church. This is not an assembly. You come to look for a man of God. 
is a place you come to meet God to become the man of your generation. I want God showed me a few things. I have been I've been preaching about Elisha for years, but I never saw what God showed me today. This man was asked at the end of his encounter with God after defeating the prophets of Baal, killing them, and Je Je Jezebel going after him, and he ran away. He was fed by the angel. And he rose to the mountain top, encountered God. At the end of the encounter, say, "Go and anoint three people." Now, these three people were instruments in the hand of God to execute His kingdom mandate in a generation. One of them is who anoints Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king of Israel. Go to the previous verse. Go, return on your way, and when you arrive, anoint. Azael as king of Aram, Syria. That's number one. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king of where? God had a plan for all these people. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Eber Mehola, you shall anoint as prophet. Where? In your place. That means you cannot die. When I tell people I will never die, people don't understand the depth of that revelation. I cannot die because before God calls me home, somebody will stand in my place. Death is termination. Death is an end. Life is continuity. Christ died and rose. He lives in me. Paul says it's no longer I, but Christ who does what? That means Christ is walking the earth right now. Death could not hold him. That's the mystery of life and our calling. I can't see death. My call will live until Christ comes on earth. Why? In every generation, there will be somebody who will stand in my place. This is a covenant. God, that's the will of God. That's the plan of God. When God raises you, he does not raise you to end. He raised you to last forever. He now is left for you to walk in the laws. He told David, when Saul failed, Samuel said, God had wanted to make your kingship to last forever. But it shall not be so. David, in spite of his mistake, God said, your kingdom shall last forever. That's the plan of God. Why? In every generation, somebody in your place. So as a father, you have to have that mindset. In business, you have to have that mindset. If your business ends with your generation, you are a fool. If your call ends with your generation, you are a fool. You didn't do it well. You can be anointed but foolish. You can be gifted but foolish. It takes wisdom to walk in principle. It is not gift that keeps you. It is the wisdom to use gifts. Right, stand up and lift up your two hands. Say, I receive wisdom of hunger for more fire. Shout it as a Lord. I receive wisdom for more. Halabosha kata. Mande pra halabosha. Say, I receive wisdom for more. As I speak now, let the fire for the men and the women of this generation let it come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Be seated. Be seated. This is so important. Next verse. Next verse. It shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Isaiah, Jehu will kill. And whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will do what? Okay. This, that means this were to build the triangle of execution of God's mandate. In every generation, in every community, in every sphere, God raises a triangle. Men who will execute his kingdom mandate. Women who will, who will birth and nurture and execute his kingdom mandate. That's why if you just give birth to a pound of flesh, if you just give birth to a lump of flesh, you are a mama. But if you give birth to destiny, you are, you are a human in the image and likeness of God. That's why husbands, your wife is pregnant and you are gallivanting and using the, the pregnancy of your wife as an excuse to come back late. You are a mama. Because goats also carry children. 
and he goods don't attend to them. Dogs carry children in their womb. He dogs don't do anything. Men of destiny, that is a time of brooding over destiny. The calibration of the future. In specific speaking, as a mother, that is a time that when your two hands are resting on your tummy, it's not a sign of tiredness, it's a sign of vision. You are mumbling in words that are beyond utterances. The pain of my life you cannot carry. It took me many years and many fasting and prayer to marry. Yours shall not be so. You speak out your pain and bring the glory of God. Shh. You are alive today because the future needs you. Why you have not died? Why accident has not claimed you? Why things have not stolen you? Is because the entire creation in your sphere, they have been waiting for the revelation of image and likeness. I cannot preach the gospel of a cocky and beans. The gospel that makes you feel if you eat and drink, God is good. Shut up! Criminals eat and drink and God is not good in their criminality. We are talking about God as birthing a generation that will birth another generation that will birth the sons and daughters of God on earth. And people say, I want to be a minister. Minister, what are you birthing in ministry? What are we raising in church? What do we produce into the society? We need to release arrows intentionally. We need to release arrows intentionally that God can use. You see, those who escape Azahel, Jehu will bring down. Those who escape Jehu, Elisha is standing. Ah, men who kill without guns, labor shakata, men without arrow, but who bring down Goliath, who bring down mighty men. Why? They have been anointed by fire. The greatest generals are not produced by the American army. The greatest general is not from Russia, it's not from China. The real general, they are produced from the heavenly kitchen. The corridor of the Holy Ghost. I wish that fire will burn. And that's the cry of Jesus. I came for fire. It takes anointing to raise those who will execute the mandate of Jehovah. Who will kill what killed the ancestor. This, you see, some will escape Isaiah, but Jehu is there. Some will escape Jehu, but, uh, but Elisha is there. That's why when a minister is envious of another minister, he's an antichrist. Because there are certain enemies you will not kill. And it takes another minister that is there to kill. Stand up, stand up and just speak in the Holy Ghost. Stand up and just speak in the Holy Ghost. Break down walls. Say, let walls collapse. Let walls collapse by the fire of the kingdom of God. I feel like dancing in the fire. Literally, I just feel like dancing in the fire. Mande posha, lebra konda labra sota, minde kete balabo sote handa labra. Say, give me the hunger of Elisha. Patrick Grace Henry is the president, Grace Family Commonwealth of Champions. Worship with us every Sunday, 8.30 a.m., Champions University, and subsequently, Extended Family Assembly, 10 a.m., aired live on Planet 101.1 FM, Uyo, Venue, Goshen, Kilometer 14, Mwaniba Road, Ekamban Sukara, Uyo, Akwaimom State. Join us live on Facebook and YouTube at Grace Family Outreach and via the Christ Radio app. This program is sponsored by the Covenant Partners and Friends of Grace Family Outreach. You can be part of this grace revolution by becoming a partner today. To all our partners and friends, we say thank you. For prayers, counseling and inquiries, please call 0818-043-3225 or 0907-383-8742. Grace Family, raising champions from ordinary people.